Hey guys, what's going on? Bowman 1951 here. We are in a small adventure today, heading out to the Boston suburbs. In fact, we're actually here. I'm just heading over to my wife's cousin's house, the guy that got me into card collecting, and uh, I owe everything to him. I wouldn't be doing this without him. And we're gonna go over some of the best cards in his collection today. I've always wanted to show these off. He's got some really great stuff that he's been collecting. So this will be fun. I don't know how we're gonna turn this out. Maybe it'll be like a top 10. Uh, I can't wait to show off some of these cards. So stay tuned. We're on a little sports card adventure. What's going on everybody? This is Silver Bowman 1951. Hey. What's up? We are doing a top video of some of the best cars in my family's collection tonight. Shout out to my cousin Brian who cordially invited me into his home. We had a little family get together tonight and I'm going to go through uh, the top five autographs in his collection. Then we're going to move on to some higher end baseball, some vintage hockey. Well, most of it's vintage anyway. And then we are going to do a top 10 countdown of some of the best Tom Brady cards you will see. So we are in Boston and a majority of what he collects are Boston related cards. So we're going to start with uh, the top five autographs I was able to find going through some of his stuff tonight. We are going to start out with this 2004. Now he is in a Houston uniform, but this is a Roger Clemens auto. This is going to be from the playoff line. It is a sticker, unfortunately, but we're going to take a look whoops, at the numbering here, which comes out to 4 out of 10 for this Clemens Auto. Beautiful card there. Second Auto of the Night is going to be from 2004 Dunruss. This is a big poppy, David Ortiz. One of the few DHs we believe are going to be entering the Hall of Fame in the next few years. Again, sticker auto. It's from uh, Materials. And this one is numbered out of 100, so we're looking at 78 out of 100. And if everybody recalls, this is the year that the Red Sox won their first World Series in 86 years in 2004. So out of the family vault, card number three we're going to show for autographs. This is going to be a Century Carl Yastrzemski from MLB Icons, also from 2004. Absolutely beautiful. Another low numbered card coming in at 22 out of 25. Mr. Yaz. Gorgeous there. I can't really rank these top five autographs because they're crossing over sports. This is the rookie ticket of Dion Branch from 2002. Again, the year that the Patriots began their dynasty with Tom Brady. Dion Branch was a. Uh, Key wide receiver of those early years, those formative years when they won their first two. Uh, I think they did two of the titles with Dion. And this one's numbered to 650. Take one more look at that. And the final autograph of the night. This is why those Rob Gronkowski's are flanked to the left and right. This is going to be the 2010 Topps Chrome rookie autograph from Mr. Gronk himself. Uh, the top the bottom centering you're going to see it probably caused uh, this card to get an eight. Uh, he submitted a few of these, and unfortunately, that was the gray that came back on both of them. Key card to have if you're a big Gronk collector, and obviously is probably headed to the hall within the first or second year of eligibility. All right, moving on to some PSA graded, uh, some junk air baseball along with this one here. This is the 1975 Tops. Jim Rice rookie card in a PSA 8. Love the pinks and yellows there. I'm enamored by the 75 set. Really tough card coming out here. And we just recently got it graded. I had it sent off for him. This is the 84 Donruss Don Mattingly in a PSA 9. This is a tough card to pull in a 10. Probably some minor centering issues there. But other than that, the, the corners were fairly perfect on this uh, Mattingly rookie here. Again, from 84, Dunruss. And then talk about tough grading. Here's one. Another from 84 is going to be the Fleer Update, Roger Clemens. As you can see, it's in the old PSA holder. This was uh, submitted by my cousin 
on his own back in the early 2000s and he was able to grab the 10 on this uh, these are pushing close to 900 to a thousand dollars in uh, this the recent eBay sales that I've seen for the 10 somebody right now is asking about 1300 for one they have on Roger Clemens rookie then on the Clemens theme for the remaining baseball cards here I know a lot of 90s baseball card fans will appreciate these these were really tough pulls look at the 93 finest Roger Clemens refractor and uh, again pack pull of, uh, these were extremely difficult also really tough to get in high grade there we go with a Roger there. And the last Roger will be this Gemman 10 Desert Shield Roger Clemens base card. So if anybody knows, these came out of uh, packs that were sent over to the troops in uh, Desert Storm. And my cousin was actually a Desert Storm veteran. So he was able to, I think, get some of these cards or at least he didn't come home with them, but was fairly enamored with them once he got home. And you can see the, all they have really are the different uh, stamping up there on the left-hand side. They're labeled as Desert Shield here. And these can be extremely tough to get in high grade. All right, that's going to do it for the baseball. We're going to move on to three key hockey cards in this collection. But first, I need to show you some of these pack-pulled uh, sets that he's got in binders. Let's go check that out. Here's that binder of pack-pulled 68 tops. I don't think these are 68s. These are going to be uh, early 70s, but they are in here, and these were pack pulled too, I believe. Just look how clean and crisp these are. All of them here. We're going to talk about getting them graded at some point. I'm trying to get up. Oh, there's the 68s. Again, the coloring is just perfect on these. I like how they're. They've got the different orange or yellow backgrounds per page. I think they're in here by number order. Yeah, they are. So the set was uh, put together that way. Fascinating. I know nothing about hockey cards, so hopefully there's somebody out there that appreciates seeing this. So yeah, great story there on that binder full of uh, late 60s tops hockey cards. It's a full set there. And uh, late 80s, he said, a guy walked into an LCS, brought in a case of unopened wax, and just decided to rip it all. He had a few uh, sets left over and ended up uh, getting a really good deal on um, that pack pulled set there. So they've never really seen the light of day other than in those binder pages. First two here are going to be two key cards from that 68 set that we just saw. This is going to be the Gordy Howe. Now it's in a PSA 6. I think it is from those pack pulled uh, cards, but as you can see, it's very off center. So this would likely get like an 8OC uh, or a 6 without any qualifiers. Let's see it there. Let's take a closer look at the centering. Fairly bad there, left to right. Back is very clean, however. Much better centering on this one here. This is going to be the Bobby Orr from the same set. Absolutely stunning in terms of. The photography and the coloring. Again, take a look at the back. I feel like this one was undergraded, especially when it's coming directly from a pack. Looks perfect to me. And then we've got the king of hockey cards. Here it is, the 1979 Tops. Wayne Gretzky in a PSA 7 in the old holder. Those other two 68 Tops cards were in old holders as well. All graded in the early 2000s so you don't have to worry about hopefully at least that these were untrimmed I know for a fact that the 68 tops would not be and uh, this Gretzky is in really good shape other than some corner wear up in the left and right there probably got a little centering off there as well all right we're gonna end the video on a top 10 Tom Brady cards in his collection we're gonna start it off rather quickly here this is a 2007 tops chrome red refractor these are tough pulls, and not only uh, a tough pull, but to get the 10 on these as well. You can see that beautiful shine there. And the reason being is that these are very low numbered, coming in at 139. So this may be a pop one. I'm going to double check that and put it up on the screen. Absolutely gorgeous, and that's coming in at number 10. Let's move on to 9. To another tough pull. This is the 2005 Zenith K 
Canton bound gold. Pretty crazy they knew he was going to the Hall of Fame back. I guess he had won three Super Bowls after the 04 season. Uh, <clears throat> why is this one in the top 10 here? Once again, low low serial number on this. This is the 10 out of 100. Too bad it's not the 12 for the jersey match, but uh, absolutely stunning here. And this has got extremely low pop uh, from PSA grading. Next up, we're going to have a string of 2002 cards. This is the champ ticket at a PSA 8 out of 2002 playoff contenders. Obviously going to be low serial numbered once again. 152 out of 250. Got a little edge wear in the upper left. Take a closer shot at that. Other than that, it's a pretty gorgeous card there. And we've got a matching sister. We'll pull this one up right away. What's different about it, you say? Because this one came out of the Panini Convention back in the day from Hawaii. And how many people saved their cards coming out of Hawaii? Because these were low numbered, one out of 15 there. So this is an eBay 101, number one out of that set. The only one graded, not be any more left in existence other than that card you just saw there. I can kind of fly through the next two here. This is a 2002 SP Authentic base card. Not exactly difficult in the Gem Mint 10. And I was kind of surprised about what these have been going for on eBay recently. That is the unnumbered version. But this one here, this is a beauty. And it's a Gem Mint 10. This is the same SP Authentic, but we're going numbered this time. Out of 2000, 1973. There's the back of the card. And it's obviously got a different photo than the base uh, 2002 of the same card. That was cards number five and six in the list. We're down to number four, so they're just going to get better and better. This is the 2002 Upper Deck Silver. I'm going to pull it closer to see the serial numbering on this. We've got the nine on this one, unfortunately. Coming in with a low serial number, 53 out of 100. So extremely tough to get your hands on for a second year Tom Brady card. Upper Deck MVP. And then these last three are basically, if you collect Tom Brady or want to someday, these are the absolute must for your collection. This is a rookie card, the 2000 SP Authentic in a Mint 9. These are obviously going to be serial numbered. These go up to 1250. 879 out of 1250 there. Here's the back of the card. He uh, had a few of these. Unfortunately, he was not able to pull a 10 on any of them, but a 9 is still not too shabby. And finally, at the bottom two. Number two here. You said you haven't seen any Tom Brady autographs yet. Here is the first. 2000 Playoff Contenders. Near mint to mint eight, extremely tough to get in high grade without any funny business. Let's see the auto there on card, the rookie ticket from playoff contenders. Still might be some hanging out there too, left over. Nobody's really sure, but people are still breaking boxes of this. And lastly, the number one car we will be showing off in this video, the creme de la creme, the 2000 playoff contender, card number 144, championship ticket autograph, and a near mint to mint eight. This is the card in the hobby, in the football hobby, probably the number one card overall. This is the Mickey Mantle in a PSA eight. For 52 tops. This is the Jordan uh, 86 Fleer in a PSA 9 or even a 10. Prices are higher than, than those for sure. Here's the numbering on it 83 out of 100. So, right now, this card is easily in the six figures. Who knows what somebody's going to pay for it? Um, the nines have a very low pop. I'm not sure if any tens exist given the low serial numbers. As I look at the card from afar, I think the only issue here is that upper left-hand corner. You can see some white showing there. He's thought about 
you know, uh, putting this back at PSA to see if it would get bumped to an 8.5, I think it would be risky. I wouldn't even want to pop this out. I mean, that's just crazy to me. But uh, he's thought about it. I think just being in the old PSA holder right now shows that it's, uh, you know, it's not tampered with. It was There's no uh, trimming of the edges or the corners. And it's just an absolutely spectacular specimen of a card. The number one card in the football trading card hobby. Tom Brady, 2000 Playoff Contender Championship Ticket. All right, that's going to about do it for this video. That was a ton of fun to make. I don't deal in high-end cards, and, you know, some of these have really great stories of, you know, purchase years ago and, um, you know, not really costing much money at the time, and they've just accumulated in value over the years. As some of these players have gotten better, they've gone on to Hall of Fame careers, and uh, I just made some really good purchases in the Boston market, being a Boston sports fan and, and loving a lot of these players. What an epic top 10 to put together and showing off those autographs and those other uh, hockey cards and baseball cards. A ton of fun. Thanks again so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you like what you see. And we'll see you at the next video. Bowman 1951 out.